remember. Ah. Claude, I grew another one. Ah. Ow. My queen. Did you know that people of water and the movie Elemental were practically forbidden from entering Firetown? This happens for two main reasons. First, because only fire people live there, so it's a very hot environment, and water people can simply evaporate with the heat of the neighborhood, especially if they are surrounded by several fire people. But there is also a second reason. There is a feud between fire people and water people. As the movie shows, they are completely opposite elementals. Just as fire evaporates water, water can also extinguish flames. We see this in the subway when a water guy intentionally drops some water on Cinder out of pure malice, which only makes Bernie more irritated with the water element. Another moment when this this becomes even clearer is when Ember, still young, kicks out two rowdy water boys who were in her family's convenience store, which makes Bernie very proud, as he likes the fact that his daughter also feels the same way he does about people from other elementals. At least until she met Wade, because after that, her anger gave way to passion. In fact, Wade only goes to Firetown by accident, as he himself says he shouldn't be there. This is the first of the ten rules that the people of Element City had to follow, which we will show you now. Each element has its way in the Element City. If you stop to notice, you will see that within the Element City, there is a distinction in how the elementals move around the city. This is because there are conventional sidewalks, which are more commonly used by earth and fire people. At the same time, there is a kind of river with boats in some parts of the city that serves for water people to move more quickly. And not only that, they also have the option to ride water slides, which honestly looks like a lot of fun. Can you imagine? It's like being in a water park all the time. It must be really cool. And air people, of course, simply float, not needing to congest sidewalks, for example. Or they can also use a kind of airship to move, which is pretty cool. Of course, this is a rule that helps maintain the city's flow and order, but it's not a prohibition since we see that both water and air people can walk calmly on sidewalks. I think these other alternatives are mostly used during rush hours. <laughs> Fire people cannot visit Vivisteria Flower. In case you didn't know or don't remember, Vivisteria Flower is a fictional flower that exists in the world of Elemental that can thrive in any habitat, be it water, fire, earth, or air. It's literally a flower of everything, as its own poster announces. Exactly for this reason, it makes no sense to have a rule that says fire people couldn't enter the central garden where there is an exhibition of these beautiful flowers. The only thing that really justifies Bernie and Ember being stopped by a guard at the entrance to the place is pure and simple discrimination. If there is really a fear of fire, technology could be developed to allow fire people access to the location, but it has not been done probably due to lack of interest. It's a real shame, and it only reinforces another rule, which is that different elementals don't mix. Even though all the elementals can live in harmony, there is an essential rule to keep the city in order. The elementals cannot mix. At least that's what Ember and her mother say a few times in the movie when she rejects the gallant Claude, or when she says it a few times to Wade, or when Cinder says that to the couple and tries to convince them to stop seeing each other. Which doesn't work, as Wade uses intelligence to prove that they can mix. <laughs> and because of his persistence, things start to change when Ember begins to realize that Wade is good for her. Really good. Which ends up demonstrating that in fact, elementals do mix. Wade, Ember, Gale, and Fern, and Claude, and the little fire girl are just a few examples of why this rule should never have been created. To play airball, you must be an air person. Airball is definitely the most popular sport in the entire Element City and is capable of attracting crowds to watch a game between two great teams. But despite being loved by many people, the truth is that to join a team, you necessarily need to be an air person. And the reason for this is actually very simple. It's impossible to play the games without being able to float. You might think that fire people can make balloons fly like Ember did, right? But you also need to move quickly to maintain the game's dynamics, like Lutz does. So yeah, as much as everyone enjoys watching, this really isn't a sport for everyone to practice, for sure. No fire people in stadiums. Since we talked about airball, we have to talk about the implicit rule that prevents fire people from going to the stadium. In fact, this rule, as we mentioned, is not open, but it exists. When Ember arrives at the stadium, we can see that she is practically the only fire person in the stadium. In fact, if in this scene you see any other fire person in the stadium, comment below, hashtag saw, and tell us about the scene so we can look for it later. But if you don't see any, comment hashtag didn't see to see if it was just me who didn't see. <laughs> in any case, fire people don't go to stadiums mainly because their high temperature could evaporate water beings or burn earth beings, as we see happening when Ember passes by water people in the stadium who seem to be the majority. If fire people enjoy airball, they must really be watching it on TV because they are not at the stadium. Fire people must not touch anything wooden. 
At the beginning of the movie, we see in a large mosaic how the Element City came into existence with the arrival of Water People first as the pioneers of the Great City. Then came the Earth People on wooden boats, and finally the Air People who came from the skies. And this seems to have happened a long time ago, so when Fire People began to arrive in the Element City, practically nothing there was made for them to use. For this reason, many of the houses are made of wood, as we can see when Cinder rings the doorbell of a house and it simply starts to catch fire. The Fire Element beings cannot touch wooden surfaces, for obvious reasons. They catch fire. For example, when Cinder touches the doorbell of a house, it starts to catch fire. But soon, Cinder realizes it and blows it out. So, for this reason, newly arrived Fire People had a lot of difficulty finding a home. As we see in the case of Ember's parents, after all, they could easily cause fires anywhere that wasn't made of porcelain or metal. In fact, if you look closely, fire people themselves are aware of this since Bernie and Cinder arrived by boat in the Element City. But it was a metal boat. In other words, it really is a rule accepted by everyone in the city. But even so, it doesn't justify the next rule, which says that elementals must wear their own clothing. This becomes clear at various points in the movie, as each person must wear clothing according to their element. One of them is when Wade tries to put his team's hat on Ember, and it simply evaporates in less than a second. <laughs> Check out who found the gift shop! Please take all that off. But I got you a hat! For this reason, fire people usually wear clothes made of metal, which maintains its shape even at high temperatures. Water and earth people need to wear waterproof clothing since they always need to have contact with water when they are not in the water themselves. Air people probably need to wear extremely lightweight fabric since they need to float, so each element must have its type of clothing for their own good. Fire people cannot go to the cinema. Once again, we see that Ember is the only fire person in the cinema. This is because the flames of fire beings brighten up the space so much that they end up disturbing others from watching the movie. And as you surely know, one of the main characteristics of the cinema is darkness, as it enhances the movie experience. This time, just like in the stadium, there is no law that prohibits it, so Amber watches the movie with Wade. But the way people look at her, it's as if it's simply absurd for her to be in that place, as if she doesn't have the right to ruin their experience. If you pay attention, you will notice that at this moment, the water girl behind Amber gets so upset that she ends up crushing the popcorn she was holding with her hand. Which only reinforces what we just said, that there really is this rule among the people of the Element City. And not only that, another rule is that fire people don't take the subway. Just like in stadiums and cinemas, it's obvious that fire people are not welcome on subways. So much so that Ember, always her, once again is the solitary representative of fire people on the subway. But in this case, there are two reasons. The first is that people feel unsafe with fire people inside, as Ember makes very clear at the beginning of the movie. But the other reason is because it can also be a bit dangerous for them since the trains travel over water. And we can't forget that splashes of water can hurt fire people. For this reason, over time, they always avoided taking the subway, which only began to change more recently. As after Ember and Wade broke some paradigms, we can see that even Bernie and Cinder took the subway again after the bad experience they had in the past, as we can see in the final scenes of the movie. These were the 10 strict rules that the people of the Element City follow. Talking about Elemental is always a lot of fun and cool. If you like this video, you will definitely enjoy these two that we've selected for you to keep enjoying. Check them out and have fun.